All right, this lecture is going to be on the mandibular central incisors. So as far as shape is concerned, from a mesial distal view right here, it's going to be triangular. And then from a buccal lingual view, it's going to be trapezoidal. Uh, here's a note, the lingual side of the tooth is very smooth and nearly lacking in any anatomy. This question comes up on the board, so here is a shot of the lingual, and you can tell it's really quite smooth. There's no really distinguishing anatomy that you can see. And so you might see a question that asks, which tooth in the mouth shows the least anatomy from a lingual view? All right, size of the tooth, it's going to be the smallest permanent tooth. It's the narrowest mesial distally tooth. So here we have a picture of that. It's also the most symmetrical tooth. Okay, here's an exception on the embrasure size. The smallest facial embrasure in the mouth is between the mandibular centrals. It might be the same size as the lingual embrasure, and that makes it an exception to the rule that the lingual embrasures are always larger than the facial. So remember guys that the lingual embrasure is generally the largest on a tooth. Well, in this case, um, they, they both might be the same size. Okay, here's a question that a lot of people will get tripped up on on the boards. This is the first succedaneous tooth. So we have to be careful here that we don't confuse this with the six-year molars. Uh, the six-year molars are the first permanent teeth to erupt, but they don't replace any primary teeth. So they don't qualify as succedaneous. Uh, contacts, so right here on the mesial, we've got an incisal contact. On the distal, we've got an incisal contact. Uh, so let's talk about the lateral real quick. The lateral also has contacts in the, on the mesial and distal that are in the incisal. Uh, but here we go. The distal contact is low in the incisal third. So it's still the incisal third, but it's kind of lower in that incisal third. And so uh, a, a kind of nitpicky type of board question you might see, you might ask about, about this situation. So the mandibular central is the only tooth, the man, only mandibular anterior, which has both its mesial and distal contact points at the same level. Even though the mandibular lateral has mesial, mesial and distal contacts at the incisal, they're kind of trying to test you on the, the distal being low. And so that's a very nitpicky type of question. Uh, hopefully you won't see that, but if you do, you'd be prepared for that. Okay, let's take a look at the incisal view. The incisal edge is lingual to the long axis of the tooth. So here's the long axis of the tooth. You can take a look at the incisal edge right here. It's more towards the lingual side. And if you look at that from an incisal view, you can see that there's more on the facial side than on the lingual side. You can see more of the facial part of the tooth than the lingual. Okay, here's a weird way of saying this that you might see on the boards. The incisal ridge is slightly lingual to the facial lingual bisector. Okay, the root, it's gonna be the shortest root. Uh, there's one root, there's one canal. However, 40% of the time there are two canals. Uh, another way you might see this worded on the boards, instead of saying two canals, you might see it as double PDL space. Here's a very common question. Okay, it's what is the tooth of the most common lower? Let me start that over. Which tooth is the most common lower anterior tooth with multiple canals? And then uh, you have to be careful here because the mandibular canine is most likely the tooth with multiple roots, in other words, bifurcated. So you have to make sure that you are careful. Are they asking about the, the roots or are they asking about the canals? All right, the root is uh, the root is flat mesiodistally, and so uh, from a and then the mesial side has a concavity, the distal side has a slight concavity. Okay, a weird way of phrasing that might appear on the boards. The pulp appears narrower from a facial view than from an interproximal view. So let's take a look at this tooth down here. 
right here in the middle. So imagine you're viewing it from the facial. So looking at it from the facial, the pulp would appear narrower from a facial view than if you looked at it from this side. So if you looked at it from this side or this view, the pulp would appear very, very long and wide. But if you look at it from a facial view head on, it's going to appear very narrow. And then a cross section at the midroot of a permanent mandibular central is likely to show that the pulp cavity is flattened mesiodistally. So you might see just different variations of uh, that type of question. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching the video.